Welcome to another edition of Training Homer. Today, we don't have Homer with us, but as I told you in the last video, I just want to demonstrate or, or draw out some diagrams of different drills you can do working with your back cast. Um, in the last video, as I showed you, we were just doing what's called the trailing memory to a known location, which was our cedar tree, bringing Homer back and then just getting him initially to run in the opposite direction of us, which is sometimes hard for a dog to do. Um, Today I want to show you a, different, a few different things that you can do um, working on those same principles but just to make it a little bit more difficult for the dog. Um, remember, don't test your dog, slowly teach your dog the steps that you want them to be able to do as time goes on. Um, the first one I'll do is I would go back to the cedar tree where I was before and as you'll notice my markers in my wrong hand. Um, go back to the cedar tree, so this is our cedar tree. Um, and you can drop a couple bumpers here, here, maybe three there. And then, you know, start back where you initially did with the dog. Have the dog with you, walk the dog back here. You stand here as the handler and then your dog, send your dog for that bumper, okay? Then you're gonna walk over here and you're gonna have the dog go into the same location but a, a line that they haven't walked yet. So again, you're not going to do a trailing memory this time. The dog's going to have to go on its memory back to where it was. Send the dog there. Okay. Then swing back around. Go up here. Send the dog. You're working on the dog's memory, but you're also working on the dog's confidence, that they're willing to go where you tell them to go. But in all of these situations, in this situation, the dog's going back to the same tree over and over again. Sometimes initially, and I may have said this in an earlier video, getting a dog to go that second, that third time back to a memory initially is difficult for the dog to do because the dog thinks, I've already picked something else up there. Why would there be something else? They just have to remember and again, trust you that there is gonna be something there when you tell them that there is, okay? So that's one drill you can do. So just do multiple bumpers and instead of sending them from the same location, start moving around a little bit. Um, in, some, in some situations, I may even have a, a, a road back here that they're going to run across or some brush back here that they're going to have to run through to get to their known location. You're just making that a little bit more difficult for them and helping ingrain that back cast into them from different positions, okay? Um, get rid of that. Another one that I do a lot is I have a pond. And on this pond, there's a, a large, my dam is right here. It goes along this way. So it's a real steep drop off back here. So I'll take a bumper and I'll drop it right here by a tree, walk the dog back, then walk the dog across in this woods. There's woods over here, drop a bumper, bring the dog back, okay? The first time I do this, I'm gonna set my dog up right here. And this on this X. The reason I do that is the dog is not going to swim across the pond to get to that bumper. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to put my dog set up here facing towards me. I'm going to be right here on the corner, little person. I'm going to send my dog back for this one. By putting the pond in there, that's just creating a natural barrier to keep the dog from going that direction. Um, there's going to be other drills that we work on in the future when we're doing casting that I'm going to do a similar thing. It's called the Nigel T-Post drill, just from the man who showed me how to do it. Um, so we'll send him back here. Then we're going to do the same thing. After we pick this bumper up, we're going to set the dog right here on the X, send him back for this one. And again, the pond is a natural barrier to keep the dog from wanting to go back to where they've just come from. Okay. If the dog does start to break this way, they've got to corner of the pond and they've got to get by you as well. So you should be able to, to whistle stop them, get them back. And if, they're, if they keep wanting to do this, just walk the dog a little bit further back. Make this more of the pond that they've got to get through to get to it. Okay. And again, I have a, a steep drop off right here. That's another natural barrier that they're not going to want to go across. Okay. So there's a couple of different things that you guys can do. Look at, look at the environment that you have. Look for setups like this. Um, it may be instead of a pond, you just have a tall CRP field, okay? That is a natural barrier that the dog would just as soon run through a cut in the field versus through the tall grass, all right? Um, again, those are just a couple of ideas that I have for you to make that a little bit more difficult. Um, one last thing I will show you is just to do, to, to do another multiple, okay? So you have a, a tree, 
drop a bumper or two here. Have another tree over here. Bumper or two here. And your dog has walked with you to drop all these bumpers. I'm going to stand right here to start with. The dog's going to be with me. He'll be an X. Okay. Initially, this is going to be 180 degrees apart. So I'm going to send the dog back for here. He's going to bring it back to me, turn him around, send him back for one of these. Then I'm going to move forward. So this is first location, second location, person, excuse my artwork. Um, this is just making this a little bit tighter of an angle. I'm going to send my dog back now for that one. Walk up here, position three, another person. The dog's with me, of course, the whole time. And I'm going to send the dog back for this. If they have problems with the second or third one, just move forward. Widen that angle out, make it easier on the dog. It won't take too many days until you're able to, to have the dog differentiate which one you're wanting them to go to, um, and you're setting up just more challenging things for them. Again, don't try to, to test your dog. Make sure you're always teaching the dog what it is that you want. Um, sometimes we get wrapped up in our brains that we're going to force the dog to do something. Um, you can do that, but it's not nearly as much fun for you or the dog, either one. So I hope these things have been helpful for you guys. Um, I've never done this before, so uh, let me know if you like this. I mean, as, as time goes on, if this is something that's helpful for you, I, I can happily um, draw more diagrams out for you. A lot of these drills and stuff, I, I'm not creative. I didn't come up with this on my own. I learned a lot of it from Mike Stewart at Wild Rose Kennels. Um, he's got a book called um, Sport Dog and Retriever Training, The Wild Rose Way. If you don't have that, get it. Lots and lots of diagrams and drills um, that you can apply in the Spaniel world if you're working with Spaniels. Um, you can apply in, in basically any sporting dog type of, of world to get them going in a fashion that you want them to be. And again, I highly recommend that book by Mike. So again, hope these have been helpful for you. If you have any questions, you want more details, please post questions on Facebook. I would love to help you um, just be the best that you can be with your dog. All right, have a great day, guys, and we'll see you back for another edition of Training Homer.